Hey, if you'd like to support the production of more MOOF University video tutorials, then please visit the support MOOF section on MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So now that we've got squalene, stage four can happen, which is squalene cyclization. So I've drawn squalene here, but it's kind of oriented in a way that you can hopefully see how we're going to make the A, B, C, and D rings that make up the steroid nucleus. We're going to start with squalene here, and the first step what we're going to do is we're going to have um, molecular oxygen come in and come off as water. And some water coming off of there. One of those oxygens gets attached here to make this squalene epoxide. And this step requires an NADPH. Talking reductive biosynthesis here. So this makes sense. And this is catalyzed by squalene monooxygenase. Okay, to give us this squalene epoxide. Once we have this squalene epoxide here, um, what's going to happen is that we're basically going to form these rings where these uh, pink dotted, li this light pink dotted lines uh, are, and the electrons that are going to come from here. So let's actually do this in green. So these ele these electrons will come here. These electrons will go there. These electrons <coughs> will go here, and these electrons will go there. And these electrons will come off to go onto this oxygen, and they're eventually going to pick up a proton in the next step. Okay, they're going to pick up this proton, which will protonate the the minus charge in the oxygen that that results here. And we're going to get this cation here, this prosterol cation. Now it's put here in brackets because um, this thing, being a cation, is uh, a short-lived intermediate because of this positive charge here. And that positive charge there is because once these electrons leave up top, this carbon here has uh, that positive charge, that formal charge. So um, this prosterol cation results, uh, and the the negative charge on this oxygen that resulted from the squalene epoxide uh, breaking up here would get that, that H plus there that, that protonates that oxygen. And then we have our four rings. We have our steroid nucleus in this prosterol cation, A, B, C, and D rings. So you can kind of see how cholesterol might result from this. Now, obviously, it doesn't look exactly like cholesterol. There's some methyl groups here, and there's this double bond that doesn't need to be here. And there's there, it's not exactly cholesterol quite yet, but you can see how, how this would come about. Now, this intermediate form is in a two-step process catalyzed by lanosterol synthase. So in the second step here, the cation is converted to lanosterol, which is shown here. And um, lanosterol is uh, one of the key precursors to cholesterol, the end product. Um, and you can see how, how similar this is to cholesterol. Uh, but it has 30 carbons, so we need to get rid of three carbons, and we do need to move some things around here uh, to get our final product, which is, of course, cholesterol shown here. Right, um, but there's a bunch of steps in between these two, in between this lanosterol and between uh, this cholesterol. In fact, there are 19 steps, and the way we're going to actually lose those three carbons, one of them comes off as a formic acid, which looks like this. So that's one carbon there. That's just that one carbon right there. That's one carbon. And there's also going to be two carbon dioxides that come off. So that's two carbons there. So those three carbons come off of lanosterol. Um, well, maybe not lanosterol exactly, but three, car three of the carbons that are in that molecule are going to leave uh, to end up giving us cholesterol, which is our final product. Now, these 19 steps, I'm not exactly sure of the details. Uh, most uh, textbooks and really sources of information that I found uh, end up just writing 19 steps that eventually give us chol cholesterol. Um, they don't actually show exactly what's going on there. And I looked into a couple of publications, and they also don't really get into too many of the details. They mentioned some stuff, but I wasn't really entirely certain about it. So I apologize if you actually need to know these 19 steps. But chances are, if you're taking an introductory course, this should help quite a bit. And uh, well, I really do hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching. And uh, that's basically it to get uh, cholesterol. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks, and happy studying.